Imagine a future VR AR headset where you're using your brain to control everything, where you have an interaction of feedback between what your brain is saying, what the computer is saying, and everything else. That's a glimpse of what I saw in Brooklyn wearing a headset named Galia. Galia is a collaboration between OpenBCI Sensor Array and a VR headset maker named Vario, who has very high resolution VR displays and the ability to mix that with the outside world with pass-through cameras in a similar way to what Apple Vision Pro does. Now, the idea here is to create a platform, something where there are enough sensors looking at enough little bits of information to study what could possibly be at play in the future and to develop new types of interfaces. So when I visited, I got a handful of demos that were little glimpses at the types of things that this does, but it's not fully baked into a product per se. This is a research platform. Galia headset has a number of sensors. There are so many acronyms here that it may be numbing. There is EEG, which is electrical arrays that measure your electrical brain activity. There is EMG, which measures the electrical impulses of motor neurons and muscles. There is EDA, which measures the sweat level in your skin. It's like a stress sensing type of a sensor. PPG, which is optical heart rate. There's also eye tracking. Um, through, in a similar way, of VR and AR headsets that are already out there, including PlayStation VR 2, Quest Pro, and Apple Vision Pro. All of this stuff is meant to combine and maybe open new doorways for interaction. And one demo that I got was where I controlled a little cat, moved it back and forth, using tiny muscle movements in my face using the EMG sensors. This is the type of technology that Meta is also exploring on wrist. In fact, that cat game demo is something that they've been using for their neural input testing on wrist. OpenBCI thinks that the inputs and interactions here are more useful on head than on wrist, with the idea that maybe you'll use hand tracking, eye tracking, plus a whole neural array of interfaces in the future. I also got to try it kind of a synesthetic feedback demo where I was able to see my different brainwave states and the colors and sounds in the room would begin to adjust based on what brainwave I had activated. You get to see and hear your mind for the first time, essentially. This is wild. It was a bit trippy and I didn't really know if I was making it work or how I was making it work. It kind of reminded me of different meditation apps I've tried using uh, brain sensors that was interesting and again, meant to show that there could be some level, some level of biofeedback in this. In fact, a lot of neurotech involves this concept of feedback. And, and the headset itself, the sensor array, can be used independently of the VR part. That, that's the idea is it could be a little more flexible and not have to be just a VR AR interface. But one of the things that I had to get used to was that the electrodes for EEG are these kind of um, soft rubbery tips that you push into your hair to try to get a, a perfect reading. So it, you kind of have to dig it in. It doesn't like thick hair that much. When I looked at my demo from the prototype, I used ear clips to get the heart rate sensing, although it'll be built in. And uh, the face mask had a lot of the um, other sensors, so it has to press in tight um, to your face. So there's a lot of stuff going on in that headset, but again, it's meant to get a lot of different types of readings. I think one of the most interesting ones to me is certainly EEG, because um, EMG is fascinating in that it senses muscle movement, but EEG is a little more elusive in that it's looking at brain activity, and it's hard to know when that is happening and when it is not. Whereas EMG, which is based on muscle impulses, is something that's a little more tactile to control. Things like heart rate and EDA, which is stress sensing, I've seen on smartwatches, and eye tracking, which is also on this headset, is becoming a pretty common standard across um, VR and AR headsets. And Apple now has opened up the doorway to eye tracking plus hand tracking as a standard. But what this technology is looking at is are there ways that we can refine that by also adding some extra inputs from around our brain. OpenBCI also explored ways that you could use this headset to control things like drones. A neurohacker named Christian Byerlane worked with OpenBCI and was able to wear the headset and control a drone using muscle impulses on his face at a TED Talk demonstration. This was meant to show not only the ability to control something like a drone, but also to open up pathways of accessibility for this type of technology. The whole field of neurotech has a lot of questions to it. 
in terms of privacy, in terms of how much of this works, um, how much of it extends into our personal lives or external lives, how much of it do we feel like we're able to control? I don't know, it's, it's fascinating. And what I see with technology that OpenBCI is doing is it's a doorway to sensor technology that's already out there and may begin interconnecting with all the other devices that we already have. We're already looking at our eyes and our ears, but what about all of our other inputs? This is the beginning, I think, of exploring a new wave of wearable tech that's going to be coming in the next decade. Anyway, those are my thoughts right now. I'm sure we're going to be looking at Neurotech a lot more. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe below. Thanks.